Good everyone and welcome to this video and today it's over a Talisman Premium Series flight in the Thatcher's F2A1 Buffalo. Now obviously I did a review on this thing quite a few, I think I did about a month ago. And I didn't really give this plane much praise. And well obviously I've, I've explained in a review why, but I don't think my opinion is going to change with this flight obviously. We're going to do just one flight, hopefully, just get that out of the way. And then obviously I'll go over if you should still buy this plane or not. Personally, before we even start, I don't think you should. I think you should save your money, or save your Golden Eagles for something a bit better. As much as I love the F2A1, I don't think it's worthy of being bought as a premium. I'd rather you just go into the main tree, spade that one. And just move on because the F2A1 is no longer the king, uh, or what used to be one of my favorite planes. It it's really suffered nowadays. It it's at a BR where I don't think it should be. It's got guns that I've never heard of an F2A1 having, and well, it's just something that I don't think should be in game in its current state. Um. If it was down to me, um, the wing guns would be removed and the battle rating would go down to like 1.3, 1.7 because this is where this plane was meant to be. It was meant to be a starter premium. It was not meant to be something that new players would have to fly at 2.3 where they have to fight vastly superior players. Uh, well, who are padding their stats, obviously, such as in like F1s. And things like that. Yeah, you'd fight F1s at 1.3 anyway, but it was far rarer. So. But obviously, nowadays we do have the Galas F3F, which I, if you haven't obviously got a US premium and you've still got some Golden Eagles left, I'd recommend you go for that one. The Galas F3F is a lot better, in my opinion. And no idea that can carry bombs. I'm not going to go over the history of the F2A1. I covered it in the review. But. Essentially, Thatcher's F2A1 is a was well, well, flown by a man named John Thatch, who made the Thatch Weave, to put it simply. The F2A1 saw service in Finland. It saw service in obviously the Pacific Theater. It didn't do very well against Zeros. Um, the Zeros completely outclassed this aircraft. The Thatcher's Buffalo could not outrun the Zero. It could not outturn the Zero, and it could not outclimb the Zero. Armament-wise, it was about the same as a Zero, but even that, well, even then, it didn't perform to standard because it just couldn't match the Zero in any regard. If you had the high ground on a Zero, there was a chance, but it was severely unlikely. So at the moment, um, just to go over a brief in my US tree because I haven't covered it in a bit, or any tree to be honest, because I have to do an update at some point on that. Obviously, I'm researching the F-80C Shoon Star, but um, I've recently been locking the American Bombers. I'm going to lock the B-29 soon. Well, once I get the F-80C, I'm going to lock the B-29 next, and then I can go to Jet Bombers. But, personally, I just think Thatcher's F-2A1 is in a really bad spot at the moment. Obviously, you may be wondering why we're doing a 2.3 plane first and not a 2.0. That is because we are... Well, we're doing it in rank order. I did a mistake in the Talisman series with the Russian planes where I didn't realize I had the Talisman on the SU2 TSS on my baby account. So we are going to, well, tomorrow's video will be the SU2 TSS. But plot twist, um, there's also another Talisman in rank 1, which we need to cover, which is the Lag 3-8, which I got on the baby account. Then plot twist again, after the I-16 Type 27. It is not going to be the IL-2-1942. It is actually going to be the Lag-366, because I've got it on my main account. Um, yesterday, in fact, when I was driving my BT-7F-32. So... Obviously, I'll keep adding those planes and tanks into the series, but... Um, after the TSS video, so obviously... Well, not in the evening, it'll be the day after. There will be a video on the Talisman series for tanks, because I'm planning to start that early. The reason for it is because... 
I just don't see why I should delay that part of the series for so long when I've got so many tanks to cover and we're already a good chunk of the way through planes. So we're going to be doing that. Just to give you guys a heads up. <sighs> so my voice is hurting this morning. I've literally just done the recording for the A605 um, subscriber request by It's Philips and my voice is starting to die already. <laughs> I've got some throat spray so hopefully it should be fine. So if I'm not talking too much, you can kind of understand, because if I lose my voice, we're screwed. What's he doing? Oh. I, I let go of the C key accidentally. What are you doing? I, I like to look around when it comes to teams and all that. So we are in a... What the hell's a Wellington Mark 10? I mean, he's in a Wellington Mark 10, so I feel sorry for him. Uh, what it, where is it? There it is. I thought it was 3.3, so we're in 3.3, but we only have a bomber that's 3.3. Fun! That was sarcasm. I mean, he's in a Wellington, so you feel sorry for him already. <laughs> Honestly, spading all four Wellingtons, all five SM79s on both Germany and Italy. Oh my god, it was torture. Both Kingfishers and all, they were torture as well. I did have a funny instance when I was spading one of the Kingfishers long ago, where um, I essentially <laughs> sniped a, what was it, I think it was a lag 3 with a tail gunner. I just saw him coming in behind me and I thought, well, I'm dead anyway, I'm in a kingfisher, so I might as well just try and take him. It was on Korea, the map was, and it was bloody torture. And I just one-tapped him with a 30 cal in the back. I would love to see more float planes added to War Thunder. That is for certain, I love float planes. Oh, that bomber over there is done half a job. Hang on. Well, it was the A20, but he just rushed in and died. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, at least it wasn't a premium. Because otherwise I could say the same old... Money could buy you many things, but brains isn't one of them. Well, there's our second... Bomber, quotation marks, of 3.3 plane, MB-175T. Use that thing as a BV interceptor, it was a lot of fun. So we've got three bomber dots over here, so we're going to make our way towards those. Why is there a Spitfire on the freaking deck? Oh god. Let's have a look. Level 13. Oh. Did the, I was going to say the Wellington finished it off, and I was like, please don't tell me the Wildcat that had bombs on did it. <laughs> yes, very aware, pal. We've obviously got high climbing bombers, which probably means they're 111s, or they, they could be BVs, or they could be a BV. A HE-100, he's in a bail squad. Look, we've got an F series 109. That 109, or that 100, sorry, is probably going to be the most annoying. Let's just see if we can get him. I love how that hurricane has just completely ignored a plane that's gone right past. I can't see him. No point spraying and praying. The problem is that these clouds are pretty dang thick, so you can't see all that well and you can't judge where no it's going that easily. Alright, you've got a duck down there. 
I did see a dot just coming above my canopy just over there. Yep, he's down there now. Fuck's sake, my team's been torn apart. We have to get involved. That HG100 needs to go. We've got a Focke Wolf on Knight coming to help the HG100. The team's not doing anything about a Focke Wolf. If anything, that's the most important fighter to go. In the right hand is a Focke Wolf 190 A1 is practically untouchable. Very careful, very careful, very careful, because we are very close to ripping our wings off. I don't fire in long bursts anymore, I like to fire in controlled bursts. What's behind me? Right, he's gone. Got one and I need turning for me. It's breaking hard. He might just pancake trying to follow me. That's the thing though about the Thatcher's Buffalo. People think it can't turn. It bloody can when you get it up and going. That was a bit too close for comfort there, buddy. Okay, we've got two one and nines up there. We've got a third one and nine behind me. Yep, he's targeting me. I don't blame him. It's an F series. Okay, that's fine. You've got to keep your head on the swivel constantly. You've got 202 joining the party as well. But again, most of the team is on the deck, which they shouldn't be, but even so. As long as they do their job. Okay, one of nine is dead. Or one of them. I might be able to spike the 202 here. Alright, break, because that F series is coming up to us. And he wants me for some reason. Alright, I can't see him, but now I can. Got some good hits into his airframe. Mate, you're wasting your time with British 303. What the hell is that? Oh, it's the MB. Okay, another 109 doing an excellent boom and zoom pass, which is exactly how you should fly that thing. P40 is vertical stalling for him. Oh, for God's sake. And the Spitfire's doing it as well. The P40 is joining the party as well. Nope. There we go. What's that? Don't know, but this 109 takes priority. How high is he? Eight and a half thousand. He has a severe energy advantage. And I don't know what happened to that 202. Did he die or...? No, he's not dead, so... We're gonna have to deal with this guy. But yet we're a bottom tier fighter and both our 3.3s were bombers. One of which died doing nothing, the other one bombed or dropped one bomb and RTB'd. BF one ten, okay. That's annoying. Another thing about the F2A one is it carries well a rather large minimum fuel load, which really affects it sometimes. Metal line and I know he's on a kill, 63. That might be the C6, though. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Okay. Because that 109, I don't care if that's a C6 model, that 109 is priority target. I don't know what level he is. Level 8. Okay, he's unusually good for a level 8, but... Even so, well done to him. Yes, we know. And I hate chat spammers. Right, 202 is coming back. Shit. Okay, that's annoying because I wanted an altitude advantage against the 109, but now I'm going to have to break. Once he gets to within 0.7 of a mile, 
I'll have to break. Okay, the 110, oh, it's a 110F, good. Because at the moment, the 202 is not closing fast enough for me to concern about him. Right, the 109 stall climbing, good, good, good. So now he'll be low on energy. If he comes for a head on with me, I've got the superior firepower. I'm just watching that 202 like a hawk because, well, if he does. If he does get close, then we are going to have to break. The, what the 109 should do right now is it should try and bait me to a climb. Which he's doing, but... I still have superior energy, so I'm keeping my energy up. I'm not spiking him yet. If I was to spike him right now, I'd lose all my energy. And the 202 knows it. Now let's spike him. That's a ticket. Nice crit. I have to watch that 202 because if that 202 does anything, we're kind of screwed here. Right, the one on is turning, but I'm going to break him off. We'll break off him for now and go for the 202 because the 202 didn't expect me to do that. And we can match a 202. What's my G's? Terrible shooting there. <laughs> You're now trying to do some kind of roll. But I'm sticking right with him. People don't think the F2A1 can dogfight, but it can. Really well. Oh, he looks like he's about to spin. But again, I have the energy advantage. Alright, let's finish him off. That's the ticket, he's done for. Second kill. A very well deserved second kill. He was a good player. I've got to give him that. You're a very good player, mate. Did everything right. Just you met someone who did everything right as well. Now that 109 is already crit, so if that AA kills him. Will it... Will it... Give me the kill, or will it give that Spitfire the kill for scoring a couple of hits? I don't know. The AA's doing jack shit, and he's just blown up a Spitfire on the runway. The AA got it. Didn't even get an assist, but whatever. Okay, well the last two enemy planes are bombers, most likely going to space climb. So what I'm going to do is, well I'm fairly certain a Spitfire, P40, P400 and F2A3 can handle this. So what we're going to do is we're going to land and we're going to J out, because I don't want this video to be half an hour long. I mean I could continue, but I don't know where those bombers are and I don't know if they're space climbing, so I don't want to take that risk. That's the only thing. Right, fire the guns under braking. But still, that was a really good dogfight that we had there. That 202 pilot knew what he was doing, the 109 pilot knew what he was doing, which is unusual for that sort of level, but maybe his squadron has been training him, so... That I like to see. I like to see good well, new players starting off good in RB. Because he did everything right. Yeah, he vulched, but even so. <sighs> okay. Let's return to the hangar and we can go over, obviously, the plane and all that. So, not a bad result. Oh, I don't. Battle Trophy, what we got? And we got a Talisman for the M3 gun motor carriage. Lovely. That'll come in handy for the Talisman series. It's, it's not my favourite half-track, but that'll come in handy for the down the road. Okay, well. Not a bad game for today, obviously. Yeah, obviously I left, but I didn't want the video to be half an hour long. 
trust me, half an hour videos are nightmares to upload and sort out, because obviously I'd have to cut bits out and all that. But, for the most part, that was a good game. Showed exactly what the F2A3 could do, it maneuvered nicely, did everything I wanted it to. But I still don't think you should buy this plane. Um, this plane is just something that I don't think a new player should buy. It's just something that I don't think a new player could bond with, as well as the Galas F3F. The Galas F3F is a lot more player friendly. And not only that, it's the first, it's the only US biplane that's in War Thunder. So, well, obviously including the Tech Tree variant. But it's another reason why we should have US biplanes in the game, because I think those are a bit more player friendly than pea shooters. If anything, I think the pea shooters should be optional researchable planes, such as BR 1.0, and you should have biplanes as your start starters for US. I don't know much about US aircraft to warrant me saying on anything on it in terms of US biplanes. But if Gaijin was to do something like that, I'm pretty certain US would probably get a bit more respect in the lower tiers because everyone well most people don't like the P shoes. I do, but that's just me. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all on the next one, which will be the SU-2 TSS Talisman Series flight. See you then.